Here I'll show you a couple of ways you can take your new uh, foam board wing, the arm and wing, and put servos either on the top to run both ailerons or buried in the bottom of the wing inside the recess. This wing I'm working with today I've simply put a cap of uh, depapered foam on the end but it looks like this on the inside so we'll have um, the formers and then a space behind it which is the channel the servo will go in and the wires will run towards the center of the wing where they will exit the wing and go into the fuselage. Here I've determined the center of the wing so this is 30 inches, the center is at 15 inches and made cuts into the what was once one long control surface in the back to two separate control surfaces. I'm just going to do plain ailerons in this plane, no flaps and that gives ample clearance for the fuselage as if you are using a rubber banded on wing consider leaving these gaps a little bit longer to allow your rubber band to go across the top of the wing and then down to the, the attachment pegs but still clear the control surfaces. I have here two 9 gram servos with the arms splined on uh, exactly opposite one another. I've done this with a servo tester that has a centering function as well as uh, a sweeping and a manual function but the center, we'll put it in the center. These are pretty handy to have or you can use your receiver. This is probably old news to most of you but just in case uh, the mounting tabs in this instance for the in wing mounting for this foam wing these can be clipped off at your discretion it doesn't really harm anything but it does allow you to cut a square hole in the bottom of the wing as opposed to a, an irregularly shaped hole from a purely mechanical standpoint mounting the control horns midway in the control surfaces has the most mechanical advantage but in a low stress application like these foamies it's acceptable to move it a little bit in either direction. In this instance, it's just crucial to remember to have enough servo wire to go from your servo mounting to the center of the wing where the wires are going to exit the wing and go to your receiver, plus enough wire to work with to actually be able to get it to plug in the receiver. If you need to add an extension, that's fine, but I often find that the, the shortest extension at least doubles the length of this wire and it adds a lot of unnecessary clutter. So in this instance, I think what I'll do is mount this a little further in to give me a little bit more wire to work with. That's purely up to your discretion. If you're using a Y to connect your aileron servo such as this, it is critical that you mount the servos with the excursion in opposite directions so that one aileron goes up when the other one goes down. So these will be mounted like this, not like this. If you're using uh, mixing in your radio, it's not crucial, but it is most would say a good practice to mount them symmetrically generally with the servos facing in and the horns facing out. I've made these index lines to tell me my starting point from the sides of the fuselage and also to allow me to mount the fuselage uh, centered later. But This is a measuring point for me to measure out from the side of the fuselage four inches where I'll place the servo and four inches where I'll place the servo. Now if you thought ahead of time you can measure from the trailing edge to the back of your inside wing former where the servo will go. In this instance it would be two inches but if you've capped it and you're not quite sure where in, in here the wing formers are, generally unless you've used really dark colored tape as you can shine a light on it like that and measure in and it looks like mine are three inches and a quarter in. So that will allow me to take that measurement later and put the servo in the correct place. Now I've measured my uh, servo mounting holes to begin three and a quarter inches from the trailing edge and since these servos are pretty darn close to one inch by one inch I've made a one inch square for each corresponding place four inches out from the fuselage and I've made a similarly sized hole in the center where the servo wires will exit the wing and go to the receiver right here. Now we've got our holes cut right up to but ideally not into the uh, inside former so you've got the top surface of the wing to attach to and the front surface of the former right there. If you're a little too close you can cut a little bit of it away. Same for the center and on this side I've cut out an additional little recess to allow the servo horn excursion once the servo is mounted inside the wing. 
Now I've temporarily placed the servos in the recesses in the bottom of the wing and I'll measure back a straight line perpendicular to the trailing edge to determine the point where the control horn will go on the control surface and make a mark. You can double check that against your fuselage line like that. What I've been using for control horns lately, as well as for motor mounts and uh, reinforcement panels, are these gift cards that uh, can usually be borrowed, as it were, from retailers and restaurants. If they have a stack out front, these have no credit on them. And they're just nice, uh, kind of flexible, but just rigid enough plastic for that kind of thing. There's a million ways to do control horns. Either there's store-bought ones, there's popsicle sticks and tongue depressors, whatever you'd like is fine. So here I've taken two little strips of that uh, gift card and then put them, bent them in half and placed them back to back. I'm just using some uh, needle drivers, hemostats most people would think of them as. And in order to drill the hole I'm going to use a piece of the actual push rod that's been cut with dikes so that it's got a little chisel point on it that acts as a drill bit that's the perfect diameter. And I'm going to put a hole through both of these at the same time and so with this surface parallel it'll be sure that the hole that I place is the same distance from the control surface, so the control surface excursion will be the same between the two control uh, horns. Just like that. And so these two control horns I'm going to glue on respectively to the control surfaces with the hole right on the line that I've made on parallel with the servo horn, not, not the body that you've cut with the actual hole, so this is a straight line, and with the hole as close as possible to the hen. Now for actually placing the servos in the holes, a lot of guys would use hot glue, which is perfectly acceptable. I happen to like to use this Scotch uh, two-sided heavy-duty foam tape. This is uh, quite a large roll here. This is about $15, and uh, there are smaller rolls for about 6 bucks, like this. It works really well because it's it's incredibly strong, but yet you can take it off later if you need to. And so it's so I recommend just snaking your servo wires through, taping in place. If there's any chance they might fall back in there. And if you've chosen to use the two-sided tape, just place it on there and stick the servo in the hole onto the upper surface of the wing. And the same the other side, just like that, as, as square and parallel as possible. And that's pretty much going to be flush with the bottom surface of the wing. This wing used two formers inside and the servo comes right to the bottom surface almost perfectly flush. Using three formers inside the wing for a thicker camber will allow you to completely bury that servo inside the wing. At this point you can, if you prefer to put a little hot glue around the perimeter for safety or use an additional piece of tape, colored or otherwise, over the surface, you can do that. Check your servo has full excursion back and forth and enlarge that hole if needed. Now I've cut two servo uh, control push rods equal length um, just because I'm pretty well practiced at measuring these, a much better practice I would recommend is actually using these adjustable servo arm connectors like this that you can adjust and use a Z-bend on one end and a straight on the other. Now it's time to put on the control horn itself with the control rod straight back from the servo and hot glue is a pretty standard attachment here for foamies but I actually prefer to use this uh, two-sided tape because if it needs to be adjusted later it's easy to pull right off. I have cut away the tape and if there had been any paper on this control surface, I would cut that off as well. And then just put it in the desired place. And push it right down. And there you have it. Re repeat on the other side. And you're good to go. That completes the servo and control arm installation in the Armin foam board wing.